Hello, everybody. So I'm here joined with Lonise Francois. I hope I pronounced her name right. Uh, so I'll give her a little bit of time to introduce herself and then we'll get into today's chat. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Wilnice Francois. And yes, you did pronounce that correctly. I am a herbalist and private chef that infuses the plants and love of the earth into my daily lifestyle, specifically those that are indigenous to the spaces that I inhabit. And of course, IET. So I'm excited to share with you guys today. And I also want to thank Kadia for allowing me into her space to share about some of the beautiful plant friends that are indigenous to IET. And um, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you as well. All right. So our first question was, what's your ex what was your experience with the plants as a child? I think I like to, t I tend to say that um, plants have been in my life probably before conception, obviously. <laughs> um, being from the diaspora, the African diaspora specifically, my parents come from IET and a lot of our culture is, you know, highly medicinal with the plants. And so I think plants have been in my life from the time my mother's postpartum care to growing up, having to need certain oils and herbal teas to stay well, to planting gardens with my father during the summer and spring in New York, and just, you know, always being fascinated by the plant kingdom. What part of New York was that? I grew up in Brooklyn. And we lived a little bit in Queens too. So I spent a lot of my childhood between Brooklyn and Queens. And um, yeah, during those months, specifically the spring and summer that and fall as well. Like those were my favorite seasons because it was a time for us to be in the garden. Okay, because I actually was born in Brooklyn and when we were two, my mom moved us to Queens. So I actually lived there until I was 14. And then we moved, uh, like a lot of people did, that um, their grandparents moved to the north. We moved back to the south. So now I'm in Tennessee. So so it's good yeah. being another New Yorker. All right. Yeah, so definitely. when did you actually begin your own personal journey then with the plants? I'm oh. sorry to cut you off. <laughs> No, no, it's all good. I know the lagging technology. But um, my personal journey began, like a committed personal journey to plants began, I want to say, teenage years, right? I think during those moments as a woman and, you know, we're starting to menstruate and do certain things with our bodies started changing. I think my need to learn how to take care of my body a little bit better helped me dive a little bit deeper into plant medicine. And um, that's how it started off for me. But I feel like even as a child, I was, I was always had a really intimate relationship with the plants, specifically the flowers. Like those were the things I love to plant in the garden and just be with and pick and really curious about. But actually implementing into my daily habits definitely started in my later adolescence, early, early adulthood. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So are, what are some of the historical influence then on, you know, um, the culture of IT? Um, you can talk about, you know, just the culture, the cuisine or herbalism. Um, what are the influences that yeah. you have to talk about? Okay. Well, like many of the country, the African diaspora countries here in the West, um, Haiti is deeply rich and entrenched in just like its relationship to the earth culturally. Like a lot of what we eat, a lot of what we do um, is always tied right back to the earth, much like most African cultures. And what I, I like to coin IET as being Little Africa. And because of the reasons why is we have a lot of indigenous plants that are indigenous to the island or to the continent of Africa that you find in IET, because of course our ancestors brought those things with them, right? Carried a lot of the medicines with them and we still implement them to this day. A lot of the foods that we eat is richly African. One of my favorites we're, we're gonna dive into a little bit later, which is called Lui, coin it Lalo, but it is a plant that's found in the in Western Africa, as well as in the Northern regions, indigenous to those spaces. And it is a, de a delicacy eaten in, Af in, in IET. Like we enjoy that meal so deeply. And um, it's again, one of those plants that draws us right back to our traditions in, in Africa. So um, 
I always say everything that we do in IET is the indigenous and African imprint that's just like screaming out of us. And um, all of the plants that we use in every aspect of our lives is, again, ties us right back to the continent. Right. And you also think um, getting the independence, you know, um, so early as well, you, you all were able to keep a little bit more of the culture as well. Oh, definitely. I think um, our intelligence with the earth and that's obviously coined from the indigenous peoples of the island of IET, the Taina Arwakan folk that were there that already had just like this vast knowledge of the landscape of IET um, helped in a lot of um, the rebel fighting that happened in during that revolutionary war that happened on the island. So there was a lot of plant ecology and biology and alchemizing that happened with the plants to help us defeat some of um, those folks that came to you know, terrorize the island and the people. Yes. Okay. Those folks. I love that. Yeah, those <laughs> so, so what are some of your favorite ways that you're using plants, you know, um, daily? I think every way, like there's plants implemented in every aspect of my life from what I'm putting on top of my skin to what I'm using to help nourish my hair. And of course, what I'm ingesting in food. One of my favorite ways, I think the most favorite way of in implementing specifically herbal medicine is through the kitchen. For me, I love adding plant medicine into my food um, in every way, in breakfast, lunch, and dinner, whether it be powdered form, tinctures, or just like using the live fresh plant medicines into any form, cakes and, and oils and, you know, stews, soups, whatever it is. I think I, I intentionally implement plants, medicine specifically into everything of my life. So it's that it's an embodied lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what helps to keep me well and balanced and then also grounded in my work, as well as the work for my clients. Okay, um, I think one of the titles you have, because you have so many, I think one uh, I've seen that you also are like a chef. Mm-hmm, yes. Is that love of cooking? Was that from your mom or? Oh, definitely. I think, um, yeah, we grew up in the kitchen <laughs> and me and my mother still to this day are in the kitchen. A lot of our bonding happened over the stove. And since a child, I was just always so curious and fascinated with the way she nourished us and nurtured us. Like I was blessed enough to have that relationship with her where she really took the time to cook us a home cooked meal every single day and still does to this day, you know, especially when we're home. Um, but um, yeah, a lot of my love for being in the kitchen and just nourishing and nurturing others comes from that demonstration that I saw growing up. And so she does a really beautiful job at um, teaching how to be in the kitchen. And she also has this really mad, beautiful flair about her that I guess I wanted to emulate. And I've embodied that just to, I think, every respect. And um, I love being in the kitchen just as much as she does. Okay, awesome, awesome. All right, so tell us about some of your favorite plants. And I'll just give you the floor to talk about all of them. Um, mm -hmm. So do you want to switch, which or do you feel called to talk about first? Let's talk about Lalo, since that was the one who's, who came up in conversation first. <laughs> yeah, so Lalo is the IECN term or the Creole term for uh, what some of us in the West would recognize as being Molokia or jute leaves. And another name, we could recognize it as being Jews Mallow. Uh, another name also is Egyptian spinach. So it is a, it's within the spinach family and it's a really beautiful leafy green that we ingest in IET as a food delicacy. It is richly medicinal with things like vitamin A's and K's and iron. And in IET, it's used as postpartum medicine um, for moms, to eat post after giving birth to help rebuild blood cells um, within the body system after labor is childbirth. So we, within this, the regions of La Tibonite, which is an area in IET that's a little bit coastal, you'll find the Jew, Jews mallow growing wildly. And we, you know, because it's just a treasured food, it's almost as if every time you have a family member that's traveling to IET, you make sure that they're bringing you back a bundle of that leafy green. And it is truly one of my favorite medicines to ingest. Much like how we have here in the West, in Western herbalism, nettles are raved for just how deeply mineral rich they are. Well, Jews mallow is an equivalent to that mineral rich um, goodness that you'll find in plant medicines. And so drinking an infusion of it is also recommended, but 
we in IT love to have it as a stew. And the other reasons why it's used postpartumly for moms specifically is because it has really a beautiful mucilaginous context to it. And so what it, whenever you have a plant medicine that's really rich in mus mucilage, or that coating material that helps to coat the body system, that means it helps to cool us. And so if you have things like frayed nerves or just need anything to just kind of like cool down any form of inflammation in the body, beautiful way of incorporating that medicine into your system. And so juice mallow is, is probably one of my favorite foods that I think is very specific to IET, especially in the way we eat them. But we find that there are many other cultures across the continent that love to enjoy it just as we do um, in spaces like Nigeria. It's called Igusi. Uh, uh, in Egypt, they call it Molokia. And it's just a delicious, delicious, just slimy, rich green stew that I, I always recommend everyone to try at least once. <laughs> yeah, and I have tried it and it definitely, um, I guess, especially if you don't grow up eating it, it can be acquired taste because of the texture. Um, mm -hmm. But I did, I did actually like the taste. So. Oh, awesome. I'm, I'm yeah. glad you did. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's, you don't usually find people finding it. So that's awesome that you were able to incorporate it into your diet. Definitely. Yeah, um, it was, I think it was an Ethiopian restaurant um, that yes. we went to that we tried for the first time. So that was really nice. Yeah, that's um, really cool. Yeah, so uh, what about uh, basil? Oh, basilic. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, basil always has my heart. Basilic is such a sacred plant ally in IET. It's used across the lifespan from babies to our elders. It is one of those plants that we also know in Western herbalism is revered for just how powerful it is in helping to keep the balance in the in the body system, right? It keeps um, homeostasis well. So basilic is what we is the Creole term for basil. And what's revered in IET and also found wildly is the uh, variety of basil that's called Octisium gratisium or Vana Tulsi. So it is a form of Tulsi that you can find growing wild that a lot of the goats are enjoying and eating the tops of. But basil is one of those plant allies that you can ingest in about every way, whether it's tea and your foods, having it topically. One of the ways in IET that you'd often find people using them is topically. So, you know, IT is an island and it's filled and riddled with mosquitoes and bugs and all types of things. And you'll find in most homes that they'll keep a little basin of basil water near the home just to kind of spray the children after they're outside playing just to keep the bugs at bay, as well as whenever they find like sting bites or anything that kind of like creates inflammation or abrasions on the skin, you'll often see people creating poultices with the basil or the basilic often in IT. And then again, it's used postpartumly. It's also used for our children to help quell any colic or upset stomach that's found. Um, yeah, basil is, is is revered deeply. And also in, within my personal practice, I enjoy basil in every way. I mean, I eat basil, I drink her in tea, I'll have basil oil around. I love infusing basil with honey, right? Just to extract a lot of that um, rich essential oil that you'll find to make it beautifully and sweet. So basil is just one of those allies that I, I think everyone should have within their home and um, enjoy because everyone in the home can enjoy it. Yeah, and I love that you mentioned basil, and I can definitely see the African, um, the African, um, ex what did I say? Not experience, um, but the influence, um, mm -hmm. because you know basil. Actually, the like three or maybe even more species of basil are um, do originate from Africa, and so I love yeah. it. And then the use of it as poultices and on the skin, uh, definitely hail from Africa. So I uh, learned a definitely. little bit there. Okay. Definitely. Um, so next, I don't know how to pronounce the mushroom that you were going to talk about, uh, yeah. but yeah, please share a little bit of your knowledge on the next one. Yeah, we've I think we've saved the best for last, or so this might not be the last, but John John <laughs> is very specific to the island of IT. It is a fungi, and John John is again one of those delicacies that we all enjoy within the diaspora of IT. This fungi is so deeply medicinal that if you soak the uh, mushrooms in some water, the water becomes black. 
right? Because of just how rich it is in carbon and helping to alkalize the body system. And you'll find that some of our elder teachers speaks a lot about John John and how it helps to alkalize the system. And so the, our ancestors in IET understood the relationship that we ha our African bodies had with rice, <laughs> right? And so one of the delicacies that we have in IET is, is a John John rice, where we infuse rice with a John John water to create black rice. And that again helps to pacify some of the acidity that would happen in the body when we're ingesting all of that sugar and carb from the rice. And so, you know, it gives us a little bit of uh, leeway to have our rice, but still be balancing and well for our body systems. But John John is, is also enjoyed medicinally. Like you'll have some people use it um, post, you know, a little bit too much partying, <laughs> you know? <laughs> They've had a little bit too much of a good time. They'll often drink that that water again to help cool, quell the di digestive system and bring back balance to the gut flora because it is, again, most mushrooms or most fung fungi you'll find really does a beautiful job at helping to balance the gut flora and the body system. So John John is a digestive aid. It is rich and powerful and iron. Right. And so anything that really brings out the carbon in in water, for instance, imagine what it's doing to our body systems. Right. That's also that connection to the melanin that we have in our relationship to our wellness and our body systems. And so can John John be found anywhere else on the earth? I know literally the island of IIT is the only space where you find that that specific particular fungi and there are must there are some ecologists and, and mushroom fanatics who are trying to find other spaces where you could find it um growing but so far from my research i found that IIT is really the only place that one uses that particular fungi within food to ingest and can be found just growing randomly yeah i, I love that yeah oh, that's so powerful does it have a similar taste to some of our other mushrooms is it more of a bland flavor or yeah i think no i think John John is very umami it has a very umami flavor to it like most mushrooms do but it is very like uh specific to John John. like i don't know from from all the mushrooms i've experienced so far John John is very very particular in, in both scent and what it does to, to food oh okay. yeah awesome. yeah uh, castor, the castor. Uh, yes, castor. So in IET, the Creole term for castor is l'huile mascritzi or mascritzi, fey mascritzi. And that is um, the castor plant particularly. And in IET, you'll find it growing wildly, right? And again, that's another plant that's, it is indigenous to the continent of Africa, but also can be found within our space in IET. And we use that entire plant in many ways. I think one of the most revered ways we use it is making an oil with the seeds, also known as black castor oil. I mean, black castor oil is in every single household of the ice and diaspora. If you have a Haitian friend, they are going to have a bottle of Lou Masquerade tea tucked away somewhere because it is one of the prized possessions that we use to just keep everyone balanced and well in the body system or in, in the family. Um, Lula Maspecie is treasured because one, it helps to quell fevers. We use it topically for that reason. It's an expectorant, right? We use it to relieve any like congestion that could be from the lungs when heated and put massaged on our lungs. Um, Lula Maspecie is sometimes ingested. If you have an upset stomach, we kind of do that as well. Like that's an old remedy that we do. If there's any cuts or bruises or um, any inflammation, inflamed joints that you'll have in the body, We'll heat up some some black castor oil and rub that big bad boy on there just to help relieve that pain and inflammation that you'll sometimes find. So black castor oil is revered deeply within the island. And then as well as the leaves, the leaves in IET are used postpartumly for mothers as, as a part of postpartum care. Like we are in IET, there is a, a thing called a bang that's done after a mother um, uh, believes a child vaginally where a wash is done and one of the ingredients is the the, the masquerade leaf or the castor leaf that we we use to just again rebalance the space and bring back moisture as well as any wounds that need healing um as well as stanting blood so stopping any bleeding that could happen post yeah awesome uh we had a question uh chat yeah. is it taya shaya i'm not sure she also said her aunt used to make rice with the John John. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but she asked, um, 
do you know of a place where you can order some of the mushroom online? Yeah, you know, nowadays we live in such a beautiful world where we have access to everything. <laughs> Right, everything at our fingertips. But yeah, there are some merchants who sell Jonjo online that you can directly buy from farmers in IET. I would definitely recommend sourcing um, a particular. There is one brand of folk who use, who sell Jonjo online, um, and I'll, I can get that information to you uh, okay, soon. Yeah, yeah. Make sure I add that to the description because we want to make yeah. sure that we're getting it from, you know. Uh, yeah, that is sourced from our people and, right, yeah. you know, that they're getting their due justice of, you know, bringing that medicine onto the West. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we also have the Haitian Creole uh, Language Institute of New York says, this has been incredibly informative. Thank you, Lonise, for always centering Haiti or IT in your <laughs> work. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's um, the Haitian Creole Institute is, uh, again, another pl beautiful platform that helps to us to remember, those of us who are here in the diaspora, just reconnect ourselves to the medicines through language, right? Because we'll find a lot of the healing that we need is just by speaking our mother tongue. And um, yeah, they'll do beautiful work. So if you guys are on tapped in, tap in. <laughs> tap I have in. a question from Stella. She asks about mullein leaf and yarrow. Um, are those mm. traditional plants used? In, in IET, I wouldn't say so, those two, but those are plants that we, we use in herbalism, definitely, specifically yeah. mullein leaf for you know, the congestions that happen in the lungs. I think maybe that's, she was, when I was talking about the lungs, the black castor oh, oil being used for the lungs. Yeah, those two definitely can be used in the same vein um, to just help clear congestion as expectorants. Okay, yeah, but we're not, we're just not gonna go on those today. We're just gonna see yeah. the ones, yeah. So just for her time's sake. Uh, mm -hmm. But hopefully that answers your question. And then the last one was lemongrass. Do so you want to talk about lemongrass? Of course, citronelle. <laughs> the Creole term for lemongrass is citronelle. And citronelle is, again, one of those plants that everyone uses in every capacity from babies to our elders. And it's just one of those yummy teas that we all enjoy to go to sleep, to make a baby try to rest or after they're being colicky. Um, whenever we're sick with fever, right, um, it's a febrifuge, so it helps to, like, decrease the inflammation and the temperature in the body system. But lemongrass is just one of those yummy, yummy teas that I think all of us tend to use with across the diaspora, right? There are many names, but um, lemongrass is just, one, it's so richly aromatic with that citrusy, lemony scent. And once you smell it, I mean, you can never forget it, right? Uh, let me go. Although we don't use it, uh, we don't ingest it in food like uh, other spaces do, right? Like in the Asiatic countries, you'll find that they'll in include lemongrass in their cuisine. In IET, we strictly use it as tea and in baths, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot. One of the forms of medicine that we really believe in in using in IET is a bath, right? Uh, we love giving someone a bath so that they could get well. And citronelle is often used for that, as well as a tea, a nice cup of citronelle tea. You could always count on your grandmother in giving you a good cup of sweetened citronelle tea <laughs> for bed or to help you concentrate and focus for school. That's also sometimes used. Um, but yeah, lemongrass is one of those plants that um, is revered here in the West as well and in many other spaces. And again, it is indigenous to Africa, right? That's one of those plants that we also carried with us. And it's that grassy, tall, very prolific and abundant. Um, it's essentially a grass, right? It's not a plant that you can find all across the diaspora and in um, Africa as well as IET. Okay. And you do you prefer the fresh tea versus the dry oh. tea? Definitely. I prefer the fresh <laughs> all the time. Okay. Um, so those, do you have any more plans on your heart that you want to talk I think, about? No, I think those, those, those babies are, 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 yeah, those are, those are, I think some of the ones that we all really enjoy in IT and you'll often find very easily accessible to find. Right. Um, but I think they're just so distinctive on what we all grew up doing with across the diaspora. And it just kind of ties us right back to the continent to remind us like a lot of what we know is stems from home. And so, yeah, I love highlighting those because, again, it's just that connection right back to the motherland, right back to the continent that keeps us all into one fabric of knowing that we're all one. One people. Awesome. Okay. So I'll give you guys just a moment to have any last questions to put them in the chat. And while I do, I'm going to pull up, let me share my screen. I want to show her Instagram. Are there any other platforms 
uh, that you're on um, other than Instagram or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could find me on my website, of course, at wellfedapothecary.com and then TikTok. I'm also there from time to time sharing some videos of um, the ways I use plants in my daily life and in food. But yeah, I'm mostly active on the gram. I think okay, it's the space. Oh, I'm sorry. I do have her links down below to her Instagram, her website. So do go check out all those links as well. So I am just going to share, let me make it bigger. Um, a little sneak peek of her Instagram here. And she has, I love that she has so many different videos, lots of color. You can see her love of food. So you definitely will want to check her channel out. Do you mind if I press play? I think I'll have the, the sound off. Do you mind if I show a little short video? Oh, totally. Have okay. fun at it, yeah. Do you have a preference? Um, no, I think any one of these kind of highlights what, what I do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I wanna, I'll do, I, this is the video, right? Okay. I did yeah. actually like this one. So let me show this one here. You guys can totally. see. I don't think I can make it bigger, but hopefully you all can see. Yeah, that's one of my favorite ways of keeping the skin <laughs> balanced and well and then using the plants that are growing right around us. I think that's, you know, implementing them in every way possible is, is the way we stay pretty, pretty balanced in this walk. And uh, aloe, another one we could have mentioned, but if we would oh just go yes. on forever. <laughs> Totally, we would have, because aloe, again, is one of those plants that everyone has a, a little bit of that growing in their backyard. And if they don't have a backyard, it's in a pot in their home, definitely. Yes, and the herbs keep you glowing <laughs> and moisturized and looking good. So yes, do check definitely. out, yeah, do check out her videos. And in that one, you actually use neem, use moringa. So I just love the use of African plants, you know? Yes. So, okay, so we just got a comment. Cassandra says, thank you, ladies. Very educational, interesting. I thank you all so much for joining. Um, do come back. I'll make sure I give that link to the Joan Joan if you are able to find it. Um, but make sure you go ahead over to our platform and support. Okay, so if there's nothing else, if you want to add anything, or if not, we'll just let you guys go. Did you want to give any last words or? Uh... I want to say thanks. Give advice to a, a beginner herbalist. Um, oh my gosh. Great question. That's a great question. I would say take your time and have fun. There's so many plants to know, so many ways to dive into plant medicines. You could research, you could, you know, write about them, make products, cook them in food. I mean, there's so many avenues in just implementing them into your life. And I, I was taught that when you stick to five really good plants and really know them inside and out, that you're already mastered herbalism <laughs> to some respect, <laughs> right? And so just know that your, your need to know and learn about the plants is really just you remembering all this information because this is, again, deeply entrenched in our DNA and, and all of what we're doing is just reclaiming a lot of that knowledge base into back into our homes, into our lives and making sure that we're doing the best we can to keep our families well. So take That's your time and have fun. Have yes. fun. This That's is the fun. most important part about it, right? Yeah. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy. Uh, so with that, we'll let you guys go. And 